get some insights on the news shaping the markets right now. Brian Zaitel is with us, Senior Managing Director, Partner, Co-Chief Investment Officer at the Bonson Group. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Some of your thoughts on the market as we're hitting some records today and foresee some more rate cuts coming. Yeah, well, that's that's it. We had PCE data out today, just slightly weaker than expected, and that gives the Fed more room to continue on their rate cutting cycle. And and then, just like your previous guest mentioned, there's uh, you know some follow through on what's going on in the Chinese markets, which has barely been quite phenomenal the last couple of days. Shenzhen's up 13 percent, so I think think some of that is flowing to ours as well. But PCE was 0.1 on headline and core. That was a little lower than expected, and so we're looking at a three-handle yield on uh, Fed funds somewhere middle of next year and then a low three-handle, you know, towards the end of next year. So that being said, um, is this market investable? Do you find opportunities in a market like this? Some of your thoughts there. If you're talking about China, and, and forgive me, I cut out for a second, but they, there was, um, but yeah, th there's opportunity there. It's, you know, we're dividend growth equity investors, so it, it's, not, it's not a pond that we typically swim in. Um, that said, look, this, the market started out at 10 times earnings before the stimulus you know, came to fruition. And so it was cheap already. Um, and you've got this big run up at this point. As far as does it have further to go, um, I'd still point to the fact that it isn't, you know, from a multiple perspective, overvalued at this point, even just because it's had a great week. So I think there's still opportunity there. Yes. OK. And then here at home, how do you navigate and manage a portfolio knowing that rate cuts are coming? I guess there's always wild cards from geopolitical events or the election. Um, how are you setting up portfolios these days? You know, I'd be, I'd be reticent of, of going index investing at this point. It's, it's, it's been a great trade the last couple of years. But at this point, I really think it's important to be very selective in what you're owning in this market. There's great dividend payers, which is where we tend to focus that are trading at 15, 16 times earnings, where the rest of the market is at 22x, maybe 20 next year's earnings. And so you can find better value looking at some of those names, particularly some of the industrials, some of the energy names, uh, some things that'll pay you cash flow now and uh, not just uh, be tethered just to, you know, falling interest rates. Because at the end, you know, this isn't an environment with where the economy is, where rates are just going to go simply back to zero. We're talking about still a, a Fed funds that'll be a point above inflation by the time they likely get to terminal. And so with that, you know, you mentioned energy and I think about where we are now. In fact, oil is pulled back about 4% or so um, this week. Tell me about that trade a little more. I mean, do you think sure. energy could move higher or lower or just sort of playing it as energy being something that you can count on? Well, just from a demand standpoint, if you think that the Chinese economy is going to rev back up here a little bit, you know, then then there's a, a, a pretty big consumer coming back on, on uh, online for, for, for energy prices. That said, the area that we tend to focus is more in that midstream energy space. It's the pipelines. It's companies that are transporting natural gas and energy across the country to get to refineries and ultimately be shipped around the world. And I think there's there's a very investable thesis there, not only to capture cash flows today, but again, that growth play over time as that paradigm shifts and, and plays out. What do you think about the Fed, how it cut 50 basis points? And some of that was to basically make sure that the market stays the way it is, particularly the labor market. There were some concerns there. And um, you did, he even had Jay Powell alluding to another report that he looked at besides the Bureau of Labor Statistics that showed some weakness. And he expected some revisions in the jobs numbers. Um, you know, it sort of spooked people a little bit and some worries about the labor market. In the meantime, yesterday we had jobless claims at four month lows. Um, do we have a problem in the labor market or not, right? We do. Yeah, no, th there isn't a problem in the labor market. And you're right, a 219,000 initial jobless claim number yesterday, versus, which was lower than expected. And again, at four or five month lows, it doesn't speak to something falling out of bed. It definitely speaks to, to the labor market cooling. We've had unemployment, call it three and a half, go to 4.2. Um, you know, that's a significant increase historically. An 80 basis point increase on unemployment isn't anything to sneeze at. And so I think the Fed is trying to tether um, taking some of the restrictive policy offline, 
try to have uh, you know that soft landing uh, play out. And the only way to do that is to start cutting rates here a little bit. But no, employment isn't falling out of bed yet. We're not seeing that. You can see weak job openings numbers coming down, um, but you're not seeing unemployment really dramatically rising as of yet. You, you mentioned some sectors like industrials and energy. You noted that um, maybe staples and healthcare are good defensive plays during a rate cutting environment. Tell me about that. Well, historically, if, if, you know, the, the period of a pause when they increase rates to where they you know, haven't yet started to cut rates is, is generally a, a pretty good market period. Uh, technically, this run during our pause was one of the most robust we've ever had. Okay, so, so there's part of the market that has really run up here. And so some of those defensive historically, when we start to cut rates, and most often when they're cutting rates, it's because the economy is slowing down. We're seeing that a little less this cycle. I think some of this has to do with just the post-pandemic, you know, strangeness or uniqueness uh, in this particular cycle. But some of those defensives, staples particularly, that you get a nice dividend income stream now, that income is gonna grow every quarter, you get stability. And whether they hit a soft landing on the Fed or whether they don't, you've got great businesses trading at reasonable mul multiples in the portfolio. And I, I prefer to do that versus some of the overvalued sectors, particularly large cap technology. All right, great to see you. Thank you so much for being with us, Brian Seitel. Thank you. Thank you.